Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today, we're going to be watching British Farming 12 Months on a UK Farm. And this one is from June. So it's going to be an entire month on a farm in the UK. And I've gotten a lot of interest in farming, in the, especially in the UK, after watching a couple of the recent videos I've reacted to about the British countryside, uh, West England, and stuff like that. So if you want me to continue with that kind of theme, I'd be definitely down to do that because it's super interesting to me. But if you're new here, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and consider joining my Patreon. Link in the description for full reactions to shows and movies. But I'm super excited for this. I, I love the idea of farming. I never could do it because I'm OCD. I can't get dirty. I'm just not that person. But watching it, I definitely will watch it from the comfort of my home. <laughs> so let's get right into it. It's June already, and it was somewhat unorthodox. Mum hired in professional help twice, so naturally, we filmed twice. Well, we had to show you shearing. Do you know what? I've sheared in my entire life about 20 sheep. And let me tell you, when you see shearers and they sit there and that sheep sits there and it does what... I can't tell you how difficult it is. I'd done it at college and oh my God, I thought I was going to die. The sweat and sheep trying to escape and they make it look easy. And let me tell you, that is a tough job. That, that really is hard. a tough job. I'm so used to growing up with mum, trying to do everything possible on her own. Thank goodness shearing isn't one of those things. We needed the professionals. We've got the boys coming, Dan's coming and Stuart. They're gonna come and do the shearing. They've been doing the shearing now for me for three, if not four years, and they're really great lads. They both own sheep themselves, and I really like the way they do the shearing. They're very kind to the sheep. I don't want someone that's going to come here and go 90 mile an hour and think I'm going to be really pleased that they've done it in two hours. I don't, that doesn't interest me. I want them to treat the sheep nicely. I, mean, I know they are a pain in the ass, and they don't sit still, and they wriggle, but I want someone that's going to come here, do the job, do it properly and not be too aggressive with them. There's a different son that's every hard. year. Yeah, that's number two one. Well, how many? You got two sons, didn't you? Three. I have two, yeah. Two. Yeah. That's it. Well, get going. We've got another one next year. He's standing here and he don't want lambs flying past him and knocking him over, getting in the way, basically. He just wants to go in, get his ewe, drag it out and do it. And then you don't want lambs leaping through because they just bash into you. They have no manners. <laughs> they'll put their special shoes on. Shoes? Yeah, they have special moccasins. <laughs> you can't hear yourself. The, the noise under the shed where those yeah, boys noise. are shearing is relentless. It drives you bonkers by the end of the day. You need a stiff drink. Yeah? Get him through that. Put his head in there, Ruth. Push his arse up like a wheelbarrow. <laughs> It's hot as hell, usually, because you can't shear in the cold weather. So it's usually really, really hot. And the flies, are, as we're standing there rolling fleas, the, the flies are landing. So we're like, you know, <coughs> this all the time. Watch the flies, are biting you. The reason I, we shear the sheep is because their wool is this long and it's really hot and um, they get a bit of muck on them and then they get a fly strike. The ones that have had it, um, have had it on their shoulder. Sometimes it, um, they go around the back of the sheep and if they're a bit mucky, um, the flies come along and think, oh yeah, that smells nice. So they come, yeah, this is where we're going to nest in here. So they start oh. laying their eggs. They're pretty sneaky and cunning. Yeah, gross. They like dirty fleeces, you know, mucky behinds, rotten feet. Poor sheep. <laughs> 
Remember the sheep with mastitis from April? Well, the injections worked. She's still alive, but this is the aftermath. It's not very pretty. I knew the bag was purple when we done it, so I knew she was going to lose the lose her bag. Knew it. Fred. Part of the charm of filming on a farm is the unpredictability of it all. June was no different. There was a brilliant little surprise hiding right around the corner. That's a Brucey bonus. That was born. A Brucey bonus? Yeah. Look, that's an immaculate conception. That's it. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> the new addition. I mean, they, they call them cuckoo lambs. I won't upset her. You're fine. You're <laughs> fine. You know the cuckoo, the bird? That's what farmers call these little late lambs, you know, these little unexpected gifts. Although the price is rising, wool is worth surprisingly little to farmers. Fleeces from over 100 sheep just about cover the cost of Stuart and Dan. It's only really continued by most farmers for the sake of the sheep. I was looking at last year's, last year's wool check was, I think, 340 quid. I've got to pay Dan and Stuart, obviously. Um, a few years ago, people were not even bothering to take their wool to the wool staplers because it was worthless. But now, thank God, it's the most wonderful natural product. They're now using it, you know, in the garden centres and things. They're using it in hanging baskets and insulation and obviously still use it for the carpet industry and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's used a lot more now, which is excellent. Yeah, yeah shearing's great. It's really, really hard work, but it's such a good thing to get out of the way. Every farmer, when they've done their shearing, it's like, oh, thank God for that, another year. <laughs> it's just like, when that wool is off, they must feel like a million dollars. The relief for us is great. <laughs> it must be, yeah, it must be fantastic for the animals, eh? Definitely. June also happens to be around nine months before you want calves to be born. So we headed over to the yard to catch up with the main man, Jonathan. Jonathan is going with all the cows and calves up Costa. Yeah? The majority of people calve in the spring. Right. They calve in May and then they're all in the sheds anyhow yeah. and um, you can keep your eye on them, sort them out, tag them, castrate them, do all your treatments on them and then they go out for the summer. And how long does it take before they have a calf? The gestation is nine months. Nine months? Nine months. So, so they've had Charles with them but now they're going to have Jonathan. They're going to have a change so I don't know what they're going to make of him. There's going to be some weird reactions because some of the cows are like, yeah. They like a Oh yeah, they're one. going to be flirty. Oh, right. oh yeah. Excited to see it. Yes, yeah, so we want to see Flirty how that cows. goes. Yeah, he's when I first got him, I've had him 12 months now. He's just been with small groups, mm -hmm. and now he's going with the big. Yeah, so okay, cool. Let's see how he gets on. Hi, Sue. Oh, oh, are you oh. clever? Thank you. Get a bit of string around there for that, so I can jab him. Jonathan, you're so big. Look at the flies on him. Oh my god. <laughs> I love I love his moo so much. We're gonna get him in here. I'm gonna get the train around and we're gonna load him up and he can go with the cows. He's very soft, isn't he? Jeez. Oh that trailer's struggling under the weight. Uh-oh. <laughs> what do you think there, Jonathan? Aren't they gorgeous? They're all bullying, so we're going to have some nice calves, hopefully. Oh, girls, new fella. Jonathan, meet Jonathan, girls. What do you reckon, Sandy? The other professional help we sought oh my God. was in the fuck. And they scoop them up and they're you know, whizzing around and they chuck them down. And now the ironic thing is, it's all perfectly beautiful, lovely, you know. And then I come along and I make a hole in them. <laughs> yeah? Which is pretty rubbish. 
So I've got all my trailers and I've carpeted them. I keep all the carpets so they're all nicely carpeted and then I have to make a hole in them. Get them on the trailer and then I have to try and get in the same holes. I don't usually make that, but go in and then I put them on the heap. But that's how I do it. I will one day, perhaps I'll put it on my Christmas list, you boys can all get one. I'll have one of those squeezers, bale squeezers. But at the minute I've got my double spikes. And so that's how I do it. All these farmers are going on. Yeah. <laughs> Make hay when the sun yeah. shines. They say the best fodder is made in June, as that's when the grass is at its most nutritious. But you need around five consecutive dry days. And we live in England. When it's like this, on a day like this, and we've got a nice forecast, it's beautiful. It's not always beautiful. Thankfully, though, this June was perfect. OK. Well, I'm actually really mad at myself because we didn't watch the first month. I guess they're going 12 months. I thought it was just going to be, I don't know. That was the first one that showed up, so I just clicked it, to be completely honest. But if you all enjoyed that video and uh, the, the channel and the people in it, I really liked that lady. She was hilarious, very funny, and I loved how the footage shown was exactly what they were talking about, which oftentimes B-roll isn't always the best some, with like documentaries and stuff that I've watched, but this was really good. Like That was one of the better ones that I've seen. Not really a documentary, but yeah, I really enjoyed that video enjoyed the characters in it if you did too let me know and we'll go back here and watch the first month and then do it in chronological order and we'll just go may to july since we just watched june but i really enjoyed that um comment down below if we have any farmers watching this or any farmers subscribe to the channel and let me know what your farm's like but yeah i've been i don't, I don't know i've been wanting to watch this video after the the recent countryside viewings and definitely enjoyed that so super satisfying to watch that hay being rolled up or the grass, it will be hay eventually once it dries up. That's what I learned today. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll catch you in the next video.